if the white man wants to live in peace with the Indian, he can live in peace. There need be no trouble. Treat all men alike. Hello, my name is Alex Karekis, and I want to welcome you to my Finding Lost Civilization series. Today, we're in a place called Sobrenes Canyon, which is located in Monterey County, California. The reason we're here is because I was told by an individual that if I follow this trail, going up towards the San Luigi Mountains, which are behind me, going in an easterly direction, I would come across a boulder where the ancients once ground their food. So, what I find today, what I see with my eyes, you will also see. We're going to go on this journey together. But you know the interesting thing that I found out about this place? Is there's absolutely no record of this boulder. This is a state park, okay? And at the entrance of the park, there was no sign whatsoever mentioning this ancient boulder or anything about the original inhabitants of this canyon in this area, which I find somewhat surprising and sad, but maybe really not so surprising. You know, over 90% of the original natives of California don't exist anymore. Many of the original tribes of California are now extinct. It is estimated that when the Spaniards arrived in this area around 1769 that approximately 300,000 Indians lived in California. Well with the establishment of the mission system the Indians essentially became enslaved or lived a life of servitude under these California missions. They were not free to leave, they were prisoners and many were killed if they tried to. Well, anyways, at the end of the Spanish rule and the end of the Spanish mission system, it is estimated that only approximately 150,000 Indians remain alive in California. And later on, around the 1840s, when gold was discovered in Sutter's Mill, there was this great rush of people from the eastern seaboard to come west to discover their riches, to find gold. And in this rush, native lands were disseminated, forests were cut down, Indians were displaced, and there were certain areas where there were actual rewards okay, for Indian scalps up into the 1870s, if you can imagine that. So by 1890, okay, it is estimated that 90% of California native Indians were no longer living tribes became extinct. Sobering thought when you think about it. So our journey today is to find some evidence of their existence in this area. Now the Indians that lived here at one time were called the Costian Indians. And this is a derivative from the Spanish name of Costanos, meaning people living by the coast. Well the Indians that lived in a specific area, which is near Carmel Valley, were called the Rumson Indians. So, I think and I believe that today we're going to search for evidence of Rumson Indian life here that existed not only hundreds of years ago, but thousands of years ago. The oldest Indian skeleton in America is about 9,500 years old. So, ancient man lived here a long time ago and hopefully we can find some evidence, okay, of their life here, okay, in Sabrinus Canyon. Anyways, let's continue with this journey, and I'm sure it'll be a great journey of discovery, one way or another. So, let's go. Well, look at this. This is great. Look at this. Here's a little footbridge made from a log from a tree that fell down here. And this is the stream, okay? This is why the ancients lived over here. Water sustained life, okay? This is a great little place. <laughs> Now this is beautiful. The valley here, this little arroyo, 
starts to thin, okay? It's not as wide as it used to be, but straight ahead. Look at the trees. Look at this one over here. Now, one of the things I want to mention is when the settlers arrived here to California, they essentially deforested California. Most of the original old growth trees were cut down. So maybe right here we'll be able to find some original old growth trees. Well, this is a little oasis over here. Look at this over here. <laughs> There's this beautiful stream with a babbling brook, I guess you might call it. Now, <laughs> this is the perfect place for the ancients to cook and to live, okay? Look at some of these trees over here. Look at this. This looks like an original growth tree, okay? It's about four to five feet wide. There's another one over there. Look at the size of that one over there. So this is fantastic. Not only will we find the remnants of where the ancients lived, but luckily we're seeing some original old growth trees that weren't cut down when the settlers arrived here. I'll tell you, this place is like a little paradise. I can understand why the ancients lived here. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Look at that stream, that brook running down to the ocean. What a fabulous place. I'll tell you, I hope I can find this boulder. I only received kind of vague information that it existed over here. But we're going to try to find it together. That's what we're going to do. It's really fantastic over here because not only are we looking for signs of ancient man over here, I'm going to be able to show you <laughs> what a redwood tree, an original California redwood tree is like. Look at this over here. Isn't this gorgeous? Look, it's a good five to six feet wide. Many people that go to Lake Tahoe, <laughs> they see these trees there and they go, isn't it beautiful? It's like they've always been there. But the trees in that area were cut down. <laughs> they were cut down for the mines. They were cut down for the towns. They were cut down for the, oh, just, you know, for the expansion of the West. But to find a tree like this here, this is what an original growth California tree looks like. Okay, you go up to Lake Tahoe and you'll find trees as wide as your palm or maybe twice as wide, but look at this. This goes for hundreds of feet. Oh my goodness, this is a California redwood. And I'm so happy that it's here, that it didn't get chopped down. This tree probably was here as a sapling when Christ was born. This tree might even be before Christ, BC. Oh, that's a wonder. Well, I want to show you something that's interesting about redwoods. Look at this over here. Right over here was a trunk at one time that came up here. Now, the interesting thing about redwoods is you see here, this could have been the main trunk. And from the roots, other trees grew. So here's a circular pattern. Look at this. Here's a tree here. There's a tree here. There's a tree here and a tree here. But the main tree trunk the parent one, which I'm standing in right now, right over here, died, okay? It looks like it was hit by lightning and thunder. And look at the big pieces laying over here. Look, the original tree over here, look how wide it is. Look how wide, how it's, it's a good, right across here, it's a good eight feet across. This tree, <laughs> or the original, okay, growth, of this tree is several thousand years old. This is incredible. This is incredible. I'm glad to share it with you. Well, we're climbing up. We're going upstream, so to speak. And we're coming down from the lower end of the stream. Now remember, this is a mountain. And this is a, like a little canyon or an arroyo. So things flow downhill. Now one of the things I wanted to mention to you, you know, you don't necessarily want to live next to a stream. Because in a big storm, I mean, you could have a 10-foot wall of water coming down the stream. So you don't want to live at the mouth of a stream near a mountain. You want to live up from it. And look at this little platform over here. This is very interesting. Look at this majestic oak. Obviously, lightning strike. Okay, it hit it. And right over here, let's take a look. Look at this over here. There's the stream right below me. I'm telling you, it's a good 25 feet down there. 
And I was hoping to find some carvings, you know, <laughs> some petroglyphs here. This looks like a good spot, it really does. Now I want to say something, we're exploring this together. <laughs> you are seeing the same thing that I am. Now the Indians didn't use any magic to set up settlements. They used the same thought process that you and I would. And look at this, okay, I'm surveying the area. Now I've come up here, okay, you can see over here there's an upslope. And I noticed, look, look at all these boulders over here, and there's no tree. Okay, there's a big tree up there, but there should be trees here. Look, here's a young tree, and there's some young saplings here. So it seemed to me that this area right here was cleared. So let's go take a look. Let's see if we can find anything. Now, as I said, I've never been here before, okay? So let's take a look. Let's take a look at these boulders, okay? So there's a bunch of them up here. Now, you've got to remember that when we're talking about the Indians of that time, generally speaking in this area, it's not like we would find a village, you know, of a hundred people here. We might find villages of families, extended families. So, I don't know. To me, let's go a little further in here. This looks like a possible area where you could set up camp right up here and probably further up there. Here's the stream below us. So you're on a high ground. This looks like a good area. And again, to me it looks like it's been cleared out a little bit because look, right here, look how thick the trees are. So let's go, let's go back here and see if we can observe anything, okay? So again, there's a stream and there's a bend to the stream. Now that's also a good area to set up, uh, I guess, a camp at the, at the bend of a stream, so to speak. So anyways, here's the trail. As you can see, look at all the wooded area here and, and right up over here, it, it was cleared. So I'm hoping that maybe right over here on one of these boulders we might be able to actually find a grinding stone. But you have to remember, look, look at these majestic redwoods. When a big storm comes here, the force of water rushing down here, I mean it could be over my head. Right here, this could be the embankment right here. Now here was an old tree over here. Okay, now I don't see I don't see anything here. Well, you know, <laughs> I sure want to find that, that boulder. And I'll tell you what. Oh my goodness. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I hope you can see it. I'm going to walk straight. Straight to what I'm seeing. You are seeing exactly what I am seeing for the first time. Look at this. Oh my goodness. This is a grinding slick. Right over here, it's rough. This here is as smooth as marble. Oh my goodness. This is what we came for. And oh my goodness, look, right over here. Look here. Here's another one. Oh my goodness, look. And then, here's another one. My goodness. One, two, three grinding areas. I'll tell you what. <laughs> this is fantastic. I feel like I just found a bag of gold. You and I have discovered something for the first time. Look, coming here into the park, there is absolutely no information whatsoever that the ancients used to live here. None. That grinding bowl that we just saw is probably thousands of years old. Look, in Nevada, they found the skeletal remains of an Indian. It was 9,500 years old. But somebody had to bury him. There had to have been some rites. There had to be a funeral. So man existed here thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And this grinding boulder that's right before me should have some respect. The people that were here should have some respect. I can't believe that there's no mention whatsoever of this boulder. I'll tell you what. It's a museum piece. Hikers come up and down this trail by the thousands every year and they go right by this boulder without knowing the history of this area, knowing the history of the people that preceded us. And I find that a shame, I really do. I really do. Well anyways, this has really been great. 
there's the path right up here. I'm going to follow this path and hopefully I can find other signs. Well, right over there is where the grinding boulder is and the trail keeps on going here. Now the interesting things about these trails is these trails often actually followed the ancient paths. So this path is not a new path. This path has probably been here for thousands, hundreds of years, okay, and we're still using it. Okay, look at this. This is great. This is great. This is really beautiful. So, let's see what... Oh my goodness, look at this. Okay. Look at this right over here. Look at this clearing. Okay, well, this, is, this is great. Look at this. Right over here, right over here is the path, okay? And the grinding stone, or the grinding boulder, was just around the corner. And right over there on that embankment is where I thought maybe an encampment was, was located. But right here on the other side, this side of the stream, maybe 50 feet up this path, we come to this beautiful clearing. And look at this, you're protected. You're protected by these high mountains all the way around. So when these great Pacific storms come through here and there's a lot of wind, you have some natural protection. This area right over here, right over here, more than likely is an area where the village was. And that sounds reasonable. A lot of times these grinding stones were located near streams as they are over here because you needed water as part of the effort sometimes. So this is fabulous. Right over here, I would venture to say that there was some kind of Indian village here. And look at this. What do we have over here? Well, styrofoam, <laughs> evidence of man. But I tell you what, here's the interesting thing. Look. Okay, this is evidence of modern man over here. If this was an Indian encampment, just by going like this here, we might be able to find abalone shells. Abalone was a staple. It was a staple from this area. The coast, which is just a mile from here, was abundant with sea life. Okay, I'm digging. I'm digging this area. And uh, what, what the heck is this here? All right. All right, that just looks like a like a piece of stone over here. Let me sift the earth. Okay. Look at this. Look at this right here. This is an abalone shell. This is an abalone shell. The ancients lived in this spot. Okay, they prepared food over there. They brought fruit up from the ocean and they cooked it here. Here is an abalone shell. Evidence that the ancients inhabited this very spot. <laughs> I tell you, who would think that finding a little abalone shell like this would bring joy? <laughs> but you know, when you're looking for signs of ancient life and it's been obliterated, to find even this, okay, to prove your supposition is a real joy. And I'll tell you what, I hope you're just as excited as I am in finding this little piece of abalone. What a great day. What a fantastic day. Well, what I've decided to do is come back to the stream. I've gotten a few more shells that I've dug up and I wanted to show you, you know, what I found. Okay? They were dirty. And so let's take a really good look at them, okay? Let's see over here. So, let me turn this over. There it is. Isn't that beautiful? Looks like mother of pearl, you know. They actually use these as inlay. Uh, necklaces and beads were made from these. But there you have it. And here's one, okay. You can see the ridge marks right here from the shell. There's the back end. Let me see if I can clean it up a little more. Okay. Okay, this is not an abalone shell. This is a different type of shell. But again, it goes to show you that these were brought up here from the ocean and from that location that I found them was uh, the site of a village. This was part of their food staple here. They had three main food staple game, okay, which there was plenty of in this area. Seafood and of course the acorn and a pine nuts. So there you have it. 
evidence of ancient man. I'm holding a shell that maybe was cracked open hundreds of years ago and eaten by the local native Indians of this area. Well, it's been a great day today. <laughs> we had a wonderful trek. We came out here to this location near Sabrenas Point to find signs of an ancient civilization. I had information that along the trail we would find a grinding boulder. That was it. Nothing else. There was no literature, nothing on the internet to indicate that the ancients lived here at one time. And we were lucky we found the boulder. Okay. And on top of that, we came to this spot and we found their old encampment. And I dug a little bit in the soil and I found some abalone shells that indicated this is where they cook their food. This is where they lived. So, that was really fun. But in addition to that, I've also introduced you to an original California redwood tree. Now you might think, what's so special about that? But remember, within 200 years of European settlers coming here to the United States, that 90%, I mean, it's a staggering statistic, 90% of the original growth the virgin trees of America were cut down with the growth and expansion of what we now know as the United States. So I think it's been a very special day. I'm very happy. I hope you've enjoyed this trek, this search in finding lost civilizations with me. So come follow me as we search for other signs of lost civilizations if the white here man wants Monterey, to live in California. peace with the Indian he can live in peace there need be no trouble treat all men alike give them all the same law give them all an even chance to live